Welcome back to the Adventure Athletes Podcast, world's number one podcast for adventure athletes, sharing stories of those creating a difference within themselves to benefit others. In this week's episode, I sit down with James Cook, the race director for Why We Run, to talk about his failed 250 kilometer races and what he learned from them, why not to get caught up on binary goals, how to enjoy your journey and finding a good why on why you're running, and how to bring more joy into your life especially around your training now um, I did want to give out a couple of shout outs so I've had an extremely busy day today Um, I started it off at First Light the coffee shop in Tonguinlice in Cardiff Um, so massive shout out to them they are running an incredible business Um, and then I went for a run with Mike Jenkins Um, We ran up the Garth and he is about to smash his first one of the Pegasus series, building up to the Epona 100 this year. Um, And then I went to Soulmate in Merthyr, which is a running shop um, where they sell running shoes. But I also had a gait analysis done um, to see how I run. Um, And just quickly, I did want to say I got an incredible score. So, natural runner, what can I say? (laughs) Um, Now... At the end of each episode, we do set you guys a challenge. So listen all the way to the end of the episode to find out what this week's challenge is set by James. Um, Now, I found out about James, um, not just from why we run, but because he gave a talk at Big Moose. Now, when we recorded this episode, it was the day before his big talk for Big Moose. Um, But yeah, since then, it's obviously been and gone. Um, he did an incredible job um, as I've heard and yeah I just wanted to bring home the fact that this podcast all the challenges I'm doing um, even a lot of the profits from my business are going towards my fundraiser for Big Moose so if you do want to support the cause please check out the donation link in the description below Um, I am attempting a world record attempt to help raise money for this, which I'm sure you're all sick of hearing about. So for now, enjoy the podcast. So I did actually want to start off talking about your 250 kilometer attempts, um, just because Grant brought it up and I was like, what better place to start than all the times that you've DNF'd? It's, yeah, I mean, the... Where's the best place to start? The best place to start is on a start line. Um, where's the best place to finish? A finish line. But <laughs> like, that's not always the case. And, and that was a, a really interesting journey that I went on. And it was an interesting journey because I think after the first time that you DNF, and whether that's a 5K, whether that's a 10K, half marathon, marathon, whatever distance it is, as soon as you DNF, you're just like, oh, failure hurts like that's that's hard because we we have this binary success metric that is a finish line like i have to finish hit that finish line or i have to hit a time like oh yeah if i if i get across the line and i get my pb cool i'm happy but it's not always it like there, there's so much more to that and i think the further you get with races and the, the bigger the distance, the bigger the challenge, or or so on. There's so much that happens on that journey that you can get from. And that was the interesting thing about this, because when I started running, and I, full sense and purposes, I escalated the distances <laughs> rather rapidly. <laughs> like, I got the bug for this. Um, started, you know, with uh, my sister telling me, oh, I should come and do a park run. You can come and do a park run with me. I thought, 5K. That's easy. (laughs) Everyone does a 5K. Like, how how hard can that be? And I think within 500 meters, I was blown up and walking. (laughs) Um, But this is kind of where I learned at that point that, well, I knew that I had a stubborn streak in me, (laughs) but I also had a determination. I was like, okay, well, I need to finish this 5K. I need to be able to run a 5k and so we went through that and and so on and so forth and once we got that i was like oh let's go to 10k now let's get to a half marathon and in the half marathons was i was like okay well let's start putting some um 
some interest into this. Let's start doing something to give back as well. And I'd made a choice to raise money for Alzheimer's. My grandmother was suffering with Alzheimer's at that point. So I thought, great, everybody will start donating a whole load of money for me just to go and run a half marathon. Turns out that actually people don't actually separate <laughs> the cash that easy. And I thought that was off the size of the challenge. Like, I, I, I'm not going hard enough. And having never run a half marathon in my life, and this was going to be my first half marathon, I said, okay, well, I'll do a half marathon on that weekend. And the weekend afterwards, I'll do another half marathon. Like, I'm going to do back-to-back -back half marathons. Seven days rest in between, but we'll overlook that. And that sort of, like, then was like, okay, people started to get a little bit more interested and a bit more cash came in and, and made, made some good money for, for the Alzheimer's Association. At that point in time, the London Marathon was happening as well. Uh, obviously got the bug, stood, stood on the sidelines of London Marathon supporting people. I was like, oh, yeah, this, is, this is cool. That's my next challenge. Let's go and do that one. Um, signed up for, for London Marathon, not thinking I'm going to get in. And yeah, I, like, I will probably be, be hated for this, but first ballot, first place <laughs> straight in and things like that. I was incredibly lucky. Um, and But I think this is also part of that journey that you go on like you kind of learn in life that there are part that things happen for a reason it's, it's, a, it's a horrible cliche um, but the right things happen at the right time for the right reasons we don't always understand what those are but my journey was great okay let's go and let's go and hit this 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 marathon and I went into it completely thinking ah, marathon I've trained for this I trained myself didn't know what I was doing, thinking, yeah, we can we can do four hours on this one. Anyway, I blew up completely, did hit that proverbial wall, did all of this because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and I had the worst time in my life on that, that marathon. And I questioned everything. I questioned my life, I questioned why I'm running, questioned everything. It was it was horrible. Like from about 15, 16 miles on, I was I was not enjoying it at all. Uh, a grand goal of like four hours but then yeah almost six hours later I crossed the finish line like and I don't know to a lot of people that that will be quite quick for some people and things like that you know it's it's all comparative but I had put this binary goal on me like I, I said to myself so I've got to cross that line in four hours like that's where I should have been why would why am I not there and you just start going okay great All right. And I ran various other marathons, did London, um, Paris Marathon a couple of times, Berlin Marathon, and got myself a coach for the other ones. And we started to, to nail in those times. And then I really started to enjoy running. Um, and again, and, and it was more because actually I found more comfort in the journey and I found more comfort in the training and enjoying the training was actually where I found the most peace. And it was, was that was enjoying and the further the distance that I ran meant that the more time I had on my feet which meant it was the more time that I was out of my head and the further I went and the harder that I pushed the quieter the head became and this is when I started to go okay where do we go now <laughs> and I came across Ultra X uh, way back in early 2019 um, and I saw uh, one of their promo videos um, for Sri Lanka and it just encapsulated me. It just captured me. And I thought, I was like, what an adventure. Like, five days of running, five days of ultra running in quite an exotic location. Like, that's an adventure. Like, maybe that's what it is. It's like, and when you speak to people about ultras, suddenly time goes out the window. It's just like, oh, great. Like, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy it? And like, things I thought, oh, this would be good. And I remember speaking to Sam Hewitt of Ultra X at one of the events. Um, this was the first time I'd sort of met him. And, and I'd said to him, I was like, can someone like me do something like this? He was like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, all right, sold. <laughs> like, it, was, it, was, it was almost that simple. It's like I, was, I was, just blindly went into it with that kind of an aspect. And the reality is, is like these things are far harder <laughs> than that. There's a lot of training that goes into this. And I got myself a coach and I went into it. And, and this was the, the start of like my 
ultra journey at this point. That the focus was on Sri Lanka. And we might be able to say in a way that actually it wasn't three times for an attempt. It could have been four because actually Sri Lanka, when I was supposed to go, was at the beginning of 2020. COVID hit, so that event was cancelled. I was signed up. I had all of my bags packed. I was due to get on the plane the next day and then the, then the flight was cancelled and the oh, event wow. was cancelled. So was, I was literally that close to flying to Sri Lanka for this event that actually the bag was packed. We, we we had a plane ticket and it was Sri Lankan Airlines that sent the email going, no, because of COVID, cancelling flights, Ultrix cancelled the event, like we suddenly then went into lockdown and everything like that. And I was like, jeez, now what, now what do I do? Like I've got supposedly 250k of training in my legs and things like that. And, uh, and a friend of mine said, how, how do you feel like doing a virtual 100k? Uh, and we could do it over a couple of days. Oh, uh, no, she's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I says, yeah, I do want to do it, but we're just going to do it straight through, like 100k in <laughs> one. Like, why split it? Like, let's 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 just go. Let's let's go into something deep and that's dark. And so in July of, um, I think it was July of 2020. Yeah, I set out and ran 100k um, just around the local roads of Kent where I was living at that point in time, and and thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. But this kind of teed me up. Like we were we were ready and. When Sri Lanka actually came round again, I was uh, I was ready for this, and and honestly, in my head, I thought, I've got this. I absolutely got this. Nailed it. Like here we go. We're going out to go and run 250k. We can get this done. Like when I get to that finish line, I know that I'm enough. Like this is the point where I know that I'm a strong person. Like mentally, I'm strong. Like because I can do something hard. And I'm strong enough as a runner to do something this big. And th that, that's those binary goals that, that here's the journey that I was about to go on that was going to teach me quite a lot about this. And it was brutal. Like Sri Lanka was brutal. I think all of us at that event, like we went out on day one, all of us went out fresh legs, Hot, as, hot to trot, like off we go, like absolutely like <laughs> nailing it in the first like five kilometers. Like some people put down some pretty impressive times. And the thing with Sri Lanka is it's, it's humid and it's also hot at that time of year. And the temperature rises quite rapidly in the mornings. So when we started, I think it was like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, it was already 25 degrees at that point and 100% humidity but hey it's we get a hot day in the, in in the UK and it's like 25 degrees in the summer and everyone's like oh my god it's amazing you just go out and you run and yeah you hydrate and things like that by about 10 a.m like that needle that has, has gone right up like we're now pushing past 30 past 35 pushing up to 40 degree heat at this point we all got back to camp that day and we're like what the fuck <laughs> like what are we in for here and i think there was a number of us that realized that maybe this isn't actually the run we thought it was maybe this is actually you know this is gonna be a journey of survival it's like we're gonna have to think quite carefully over how we hydrate how we fuel how we pace ourselves on this um because otherwise it's gonna go wrong really really fast and I should have listened to that inner voice. I absolutely should have been listened to that inner voice as well. But I became obsessed with that finish line. Absolutely, completely obsessed with needing to make that finish line, but also needing to do it in a time or a performance that I was proud of. And I pushed hard. Um, I pushed myself hard. Like, absolutely like the elite runners and you know the people who are winning this were yeah, absolutely the miles ahead of me like you know pushing hard is relative to who you are and, and your pace and, and what you do and for me i was i was gunning it and it was on day three that i started to make some mistakes um and some big mistakes i started falling behind in my fueling and i started falling behind in my hydration to the point where I was then starting to get very, very dehydrated. Um, day three, I do not remember the finish line. I 
do not remember it at all. There is footage of me crossing that finish line and there is footage of me collapsing at that finish line. And that was the start of that spiral down at that point. There was, in reality, there was no coming back from what I had already done. Um, the fact that I had dehydrated myself, put myself into heat stroke, actually put myself in a very, very dangerous position because I was so focused on just rather than managing myself and managing myself in this experience, keep driving, keep pushing. You're not at your breaking point yet. Keep going until you find your limits. You know, it's all, all of those lovely little cliches that we hear, you know, and, and you know, David Goggins has got them and things like that. And there's all this sort of, you know, keep going harder, harder. You know, you haven't broken yet. Like breaking's not a good thing. Like you don't actually have to find your limit. You really don't need to go that hard. You've just got to be able to enjoy it. And that was my biggest mistake. And we were quite lucky that in day four, there was a monsoon. So the, the camp got flooded and they actually, because that raised the water levels in the rivers that we were supposed to be crossing, the water got a little bit too fast in those. So it became a really dangerous one. Um, and because we had to evacuate camp the night before, like none of us actually ate properly, we didn't get enough rest and things like that. Long story short, they decided to cancel day four for safety reasons. And it was absolutely the right decision. Um, there was a lot of people who were just a little bit kind of, well, we came here to run a 250. It's not going to be a 250 now. But my head was like, that's my saving grace. Like, here's the olive branch that this universe has just handed me. It was like, it felt like a second chance for me because I knew that I put myself not just necessarily in the bin, but practically in a coffin, like on day three. And I had a chance to have a recovery day that I could try to get some fuel in. I could try to get water in. I could try to, you know, repair the damage that I had done and hopefully go back out on the final day and actually finish it. The reality was is the damage was done, like at that day. It's like, as I started to eat food on day four, I started to feel unwell again. I was hydrating, I was trying to get the electrolytes in, but nothing was really sitting too well. Um, I went to bed early that night, but I think laying down, like stomach and everything started to churn. Um, and by about two o'clock in the morning, still wasn't asleep, but I was feeling really, really unwell. So I crawled myself out of the tent, went over to the nearest bush, and that was where I then spent the next sort of like four hours just continually vomiting up my guts. Um, so when you're about to run, you know, your final 50K in 40 degree heat and 100% humidity and your body is completely depleted of everything, that's not a good starting point. That's really not a good starting point. And I did something that in a way I will, I regret and I don't advise that anybody does this, but I really did not tell the medics the truth <laughs> at that point. Because <coughs> again, I was so focused on, I have to get to this finish line. Like I'm doing everything I can. That I was still in that point where I'm risking my entire life at this point to try to get to a finish line. And that's that was a stupid thing to do. <laughs> a really stupid thing to do. But I went out and started the final day and immediately like there was just nothing in the body like absolutely nothing the heat came in and within the first 2k i was the last runner without a doubt i was you know i was at the back i know i was at the back because there was a police motorcyclist escorting me at that point <laughs> like i was shuffling along and they were with me and again like i was not really with it i you know i thought i was so it was almost like, you know, sometimes when we're drunk, we think, oh, I'm totally sober. And you watch videos back, and you're like, ah, you are not <laughs> at all. And I thought I was, you know, fine. And, and I knew coming into one of the checkpoints that, and it is, it's that I need to act sober type thing. It's like, I need to act like I've got this completely under control. Like, I'm not vomiting in the side of the bushes all of the time here. Like, I'm totally cool. And I got in and... Uh, Immediately the medic looked at me and it's, you know, it's like that disapproving look from your parents, you know, when you come in late at a, at a night and you think, oh shit, they know, they know, like play it off, like how are we going to do this? And he, and he took my pulse and he asked me to sit down 
Uh, okay, shit. I'll just you know keep yourself composed. Keep yourself composed. Um, and I started sipping on some coke and things like that, and that was that was the tipping point. Like the, as soon as the coke hit the stomach, like it was, that was it. Every, everything was out. And I remember the medic looking at me and going, "Cookie, you're done. Like we we can't let you continue." Um, and a good friend of mine was the the checkpoint captain at that point as well. And I wasn't ready to I wasn't ready to give up. I'm soon I'm like everything was at that finish line for me. I had to get to that finish line. Like, no, no, I'm I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I was like, I just wasn't listening to this medic. <laughs> Bless him, he was doing his absolute best. And I was like, I'm I'm not done. I'm not done. Like I, I need to keep going. Um and and I remember uh my friend coming over and and she put her arm around me and she's like I'm, I'm proud of you for getting as far as you have. Like, be proud of what you've done. But I'm also telling you, you're not going any further. Um, and, and at that point, you know, like, literally reached over and stopped my garment. And it's like, you know, that, that's the point. Like, oh, the garment stopped. Like, okay, right, great, that's it. We're done. And I remember bursting into, into tears um, and being quite surprised that I could still cry at that point because I didn't think there was any fluid left in my body. Um, but I remember getting back, the, you know, to the finish line. We went in the truck drive back to the finish line and I can I removed myself from from the event at that point I uh, spoke to one of uh, my friends on the on, on the team um, and said can I can I go to you know your lodge like we're obviously a lot intense the, the crew members they had they had some rooms and I was like can I just go to your room I just need to go and I need to be completely away from this finish line because it was emotional it was like I'm watching everybody crossing a finish line that I was so focused towards getting and I was built for this, like I had trained, like this was two years in, 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 in waiting to get to here. And I didn't get, and that finish line wasn't for me. I just, I wasn't gonna cross that finish line. And watching everybody else do that was heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Um, it was really difficult. So I went and hid in my friend's room, literally laid a towel on the, um, the tile floor, put on the air conditioning and I just laid on the floor. I just laid on the floor and just cried. And I was, and that was just so hard to work out what did I do wrong? Why, why, why me? Like, why can I not reach that finish line? And that's when those feelings of maybe I'm not strong enough for this. Maybe I'm not built for this. Maybe this isn't me but there's an element in my own persona that I love seeing other people be happy and things like that so I eventually managed to pull myself together after about sort of half an hour or so in the of just laying there and things like that and thought right let's just go and stand at the finish line and, and just support everybody else that had given me support through that day as well and so we did that um, and it was still hard, don't get it wrong, it's like seeing everybody like cross that finish line, every single person that crossed was, was almost like, ouch, <laughs> ouch, ouch, because their relief, everything they did was just, it was great, but I couldn't feel that, and I knew that that wasn't for me. And I was very, very subdued. And, and, and after the event, I took myself off to a, to a hotel and literally just vegetated with my thoughts on that, got out a notebook and started to write things down about how I felt and, and things like that. And this was the, the start at that point of trying to understand what these journeys are actually like. I mean, what, what are these? What, what can I learn from this? You know, where is, where's this path taking me? You know, what are we going to be doing? And anyway, long story short, came back to the UK, there was a spring trail series, a 21k. I decided I was actually going to go do that one full send. My coach had said to me, you have nothing to prove. And I said, oh, on the contrary, <laughs> like I have everything to prove to myself. Uh, is, this isn't for anyone else. This is just for me. Um, and went and hammered that course and came in 10th mail. And, you know, it, I put myself in the bin again, but I was ecstatic because it suddenly reminded me, oh, you can run. 
you are good at this. You're all right. But again, I put myself in a in a binary success metric at that point. Um, and this is where why we run then enters the chat. Um, this is where like Lewis was doing his challenge for a number of 250k ultras and. I hate him for this because I couldn't fucking finish one and he's going rapidly through like six of them in a year or whatever it was. I was like, okay, great. All right, yeah, show off. <laughs> <laughs> but when one of them was cancelled and he had to put on his things, he was like, okay, we'll spark up why we run. I thought, awesome. Here we go. Like, we've got a second chance at this now. Like, I have just been given a gift that in this year I get the chance to, to complete a 250. And in my head, that was it. It's like, cool. Like, I've learned everything that I needed to learn from Sri Lanka. Like, I've got a chance now at Why We Run to put that into practice and just go and do it. And I thought, with all of these friends that I've got, such a tight-knit little community, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? And it was... We went out for loop one, and it was a looped course. You know, we came back to the same place every single time. Um, I think day one was a 16, no, 17, 17, 18K loop. We were gonna do it three times. So we went out, did first first loop. Absolutely felt wonderful. I was having the time of my life, so here we go. We're, we're running our, we're on our way, on our way to completing our 250. And turned around, went back out onto the course for the second lap got about 3k into it so we're, we're yeah 20 22 23k into this 250k ultra put my foot down a rabbit hole completely twist my ankle hear a crack fall over I'm shooting pain straight away sat down uh, my friend Amy was was with me at that point in time and she's like you're right no, I did the man thing yeah fine just need a few minutes to walk this off Things like that. She could see I was not. She could see I was not. I knew I was not. I knew at that point. Like, I think I'm done. Like, I think I'm totally done. But my head was saying, there's a finish line. You have to finish this. Finishing in this is what's going to tell you that you're strong enough to, as a person, as a, as a runner, just you're strong enough to conquer your mind. You're strong enough to conquer your body. You're strong enough, you know, just to to survive life. And as we were trying to run it off, and the trouble was is like where I put my foot down in hole was probably the worst place on the course to do it because there's no extraction point nearby. So we still had to travel another two, three K to get to a road crossing where actually I'll be able to to be extracted. But my focus at that point was let's just keep going. Let's just keep moving. Like I can run this off absolutely can run this off and so we were running along going along this path and Amy was looking at me and I was not running well <laughs> not running well I was hiding it very very well but I was definitely not running well and I was definitely in a lot of pain um, and she had said to me she's like you need to stop you you have to stop you know and I said no 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 we, we said that we would do this let's let's keep going um, let's at least get another lap in she's like no you need to stop like don't be tough like you you can't you can't wait bear on it and as soon as i had stopped moving like the swelling had done and it's like the pain really kicked in and it's like as soon as we stood stood there it was like i couldn't i couldn't actually wait bear on it anymore like absolutely couldn't wait bear. i was like all right cool um yeah we're done like shit we're here again like and at this point like my world is falling away from underneath me at this point like here we go we're we're in event two and I didn't even make it through day one let alone even through like 25k of this like and I made a phone call back to, to camp um, they came and picked me up got back and there's a the the documentary of why we run is 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 super interesting in a way because I watch it back and what I see is two versions of me on that on that and one is the one that's still happy-go-lucky cookie that is making some jokes and trying to make light of it. And then there's a couple of freeze frames and there's a couple of shots of me where I wasn't conscious that the camera was on me, but I can see that I'm empty, like just completely empty. Like I'm considering everything at that point. And 
shuffled me off for x-rays and then like that came back and I was then in that same situation as I was in Sri Lanka like I'm back at the finish line like I'm seeing everybody continuing their journeys like successfully like looking like they've not even done anything and I'm hobbling around physios are telling me cookie stay off your feet like you need to sit down like stop doing it you know you need to rest now I had every right to at that point get in my car and go home like probably wouldn't have been able to drive let's be honest but like I had every right to to go okay let me go find a hotel I'm gonna go lay down let's go let's go rest and I was, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm not. I'm not leaving. Like, because the community and that environment just felt like the right place to be. And that's the, the one thing that is super special about why we run, I think, is we've built this community that's around supporting people, supporting each other, because we've removed times we've removed podiums, we've removed places. You take away the competition and you create this beautiful opportunity for camaraderie, support, collaboration. And to see everybody helping each other, you know, on laps and running with each other and supporting each other, I was like, I still have to do that. And I still want to do that. And so I stayed and hobbled around on the place, like had tape around my legs, physios just kept taping it up. Um, and I just wanted to help motivate everybody. And when they came in and they were feeling shit, you know, you just remind them, like, well, it could be worse, it could be me. Um, <laughs> like, but you can do this, like keep going. Like, and motivating the people and working with them I suddenly then realized was I'm getting far more joy and, and, and satisfaction out of ensuring that and helping other people get across that finish line that it didn't matter that I didn't cross that finish line that time like it didn't matter at all what mattered was everybody else got a good experience from this whether they finished or they didn't finish didn't matter it's can you grow and can you learn from this because this is now what I had realized between these two ultras so far that there is far more to learn in that journey and in that experience than there isn't that finish line the finish line is that binary cool did it got a medal woo but where's all of the learnings where are the memories where are the experiences it's it's in the five days of running in in all of that that's that's where the special stuff is. That's the that's the magic source. That's all in that part. Being able to say you finished it, great, well done. What did you learn? What did you experience? What did you feel? Well, I know I felt joy right at the finish line, but that's only a fleeting moment. There's far more moments out there. And that's what I wanted to make sure that actually in where we run, that everybody got that everybody felt it everybody could focus in on that and that's why I decided to stay and just support people through that the problem was was inside I was still absolutely destroyed I was putting on this face to look after everybody and and it was only afterwards and it was during it actually while they were all out running and Jeff had come to me and, and was and he could see that I was struggling and we, we talked around a lot of things that I had been going through and I've been going through it for a long time. Um, and he had said, do you want help? And that was the first time anybody had actually asked me that question. And it was, and it is one of the hardest questions to answer. Because you know in your heart of hearts the word that you want to come out of your mouth. But it's the hardest thing to say. It's the easiest thing to think. It's the hardest thing to say. And I had said to him, yes, yes, I definitely need some fucking help. Um, and so while that was happening, 
and I was chatting to Jeff and Jeff and Chloe both knew that I was struggling and, and everything that was going on with that we still managed to put on our happy face and, and look after everyone and I remember um, soon afterwards or at some point a number of months afterwards I had put out a post to talk around Big Moose and what I was doing with them but also where that journey started and the outpouring of support from people that were like, we had no idea that you were going through that at that point in time. Like, how were you able to continue to support people and motivate people and do all of that whilst you were going through that is incredible. And it took me a long time to really appreciate the strength that was inside of me that I had no idea that I had. But all of that came through that kind of like learning of, I wanted to see people, ex you know, succeed. I wanted to see them do that. As that's taken a long time to learn. That's really taken a long time to learn. And when I had the opportunity to go to Tanzania to take the third attempt at um, a 250, I went into it with a very, very different mindset. I also went into it with a big boost spotty tea. <laughs> I don't know if that's the magic gift or what. <laughs> but I went into that event with a complete mindset of it doesn't matter if I make it to that finish line or not. What matters is that I connect with people, I have a good experience, I learn, and I grow as a person. And if I can do any one of those, then this has been a success. The distance doesn't matter, the finish line doesn't matter, the medal doesn't matter. Like, all of that doesn't actually matter. What matters is that through running ultras, I grow as a person. And I remember ticking through these days, and there were some days that were absolutely bloody hard. And again, it was an event that decided it was going to throw everything at me. Like, we, I was Tanzania, like, no, to avoid TMI, well, hell, let's just go with it. Like we, we had chronic, chronic diarrhea going through it. So fuel, I couldn't actually really keep any fuel in. So I started to have to like balance taking in just enough fuel just to keep me going, but not enough that's going to keep me behind a banana tree, like <laughs> on, a, on a consistent basis. So I'm finally balancing that, like finally balancing like, okay, well, if I take in too much fluid again, like it's going to have the adverse effect. So I'm finally balancing that. And if that wasn't enough and like I'm struggling with like energy and stuff like that, like my right foot decided to get like plantar fasciitis out of like nowhere. And, like this is something like it was so much, so much pain, like to put, put my foot down right before the long day, like 67 kilometers we had to do. And we started at, what's it like, five, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, with head torches on and things like that. Just, we got 10K in, you know, another, what's that, 50, 57K to go. And that's when my foot had just completely flared up. And I remember sitting on a bench, one of the, the osteo benches, uh, therapist benches there, it's like sunrise in, in, in the African plains here at this point. And they're strapping up my foot. I'm going, well, what are we going to do? Well, we're going for a 57K walk now. That's what we're doing. Like, I've got my poles. Like, we're going for a walk. It's going to take a long time. But you know what? I've got 57K of Tanzania to look at. Like, there's all of these people that I can meet along the way. Like, let's just go and see what this day brings. Because it will end. Like that day will end, that time will do. It's like every step I take, a kilometre, you know, the, the distance just disappears. Like you just get further and further. And the mantra that I kept in my head is, this will end. Like we'll get past this. Like this day will end and then we repeat. We do something else tomorrow. But whether I'm running it, whether I'm walking it, whether I'm crawling it, like it will end. Eventually it will end. And I'm not going to tap out for it to end, but I'm going to control myself and make sure that I get to the end in one piece. And we just kept ticking through it that way. And that was the easiest way to do it. And long story short, we got through each day. We worked our way through. On the final day, like the foot started to ease up a little bit. We started to have some fun. Anything that had some elevation in it and some climbing, which the last day did have a lot on, I was like, I was enjoying it. I was like, oh yeah. Because at that point, 
where my foot wasn't being placed flat, like actually I could move because it actually worked well for my foot. And so actually I just suddenly felt like I actually had some beans, I had some energy. Um, I totally didn't, but <laughs> in my head I did, but we knew that we were on our way. And it was only when we got, I was within 10 kilometers of the finish at that point that I really then started to go, oh, we're actually gonna do this. Like I'm actually going to cross this finish line. Like I hadn't appreciated it until that point because I knew that at any point in these things, things can change. Like even at 10K out, I was like, mm, well, I, I should reach the finish line, but let's, let's just keep going and let's, you know, let's get there. And that was, that was the interesting part. It was just like within 3K of it, that's when I got out my phone. That's when I recorded a WhatsApp message to my coach and like completely broke down in tears and things like that, talking to her about the journey that we've been on to get here and things like that and was, was ever so thankful. And there is, and I did, a vid I did a video as well, obviously, but I don't think I've ever aired it. Um, it's never made it to Insta. Um, Could this be an event for athletes exclusive? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll have to see if it's still on there. Oh. Um, it'll be an, it'll be interesting. Um, but I remember getting very, very emotional. Um, and then I knew that where the finish line was, like there was a little bit of a straight, and then everybody was there. And where I'd had my mini breakdown, emotional part, and things like that, was all in the in the bush and things like that. So no one had seen anything. And I thought, okay, I'm just pull pull myself together now, and let's. Let's cross that finish line. And I remember getting to that finish line and I, th I thought I was absolutely flying down the, down the finish straight towards this thing. But I had deliberately slowed myself up because it was time now to really enjoy that moment. Um, but it was also like it was a very like a dream state as well. Like everything was happening so fast but everything was happening so slow all at the same time. And I remember walking up to that finish line and I remember putting my hands up and and everybody cheering and things like that and, and it just dawned on me at that point it was just like we've done it we've done it like we crossed the finish line and I got exactly what I thought I was going to get at that finish line and that wasn't the overwhelming sense of success at that point yeah I finished it but it was almost like in my head, I was looking back at the previous 250K, the five days, the chats, the fireside chats with everyone, the connections that I'd made, that was what was going through my head is, that's the success. It's like, this week has been a success because all of this has happened. And that's the most beautiful thing about it at that point. And it was that real, real understanding at that point that the beauty's in the journey, it's not in the destination. Like. I'm going to try to remember a quote that I read the other day and it says Zig Ziglar and he says it's not important by and I'm probably going to plagiarize this a little bit but the premise is it's like it's not what you achieve by crossing the finish line to those sense and purposes it's what you become by crossing that finish line you know, it, it isn't, yeah, it isn't what you achieve with success, but it's what you become through success. And I think being able to look back at any of those points where in a training journey, whether you're training for a 5K, whether you're training for a half marathon or a marathon or whatever, it's like you put in four, eight, 16 odd weeks of training to these things. Like people go all in. That's where the magic is. That's where the learnings are. That's where we learn. The event is just a victory lap. And an ultra is a long freaking victory <laughs> lap. It's a really long victory lap. But it's it's that kind of beautiful thing for me. And that's where I really realized that, you know, that's the part of it. And that's kind of the ethos that we've continued into why we run. And what Lewis and me and the team are building with that is just about making sure that people have the most wonderful experience and, and growth through getting to that start line yeah. and understanding that it's okay if you don't finish. It's absolutely okay if you don't finish because you don't need to. Because what you'll get at that finish line is not nearly as much as what you'll get through the journey. 
and it's not nearly as much as what you get with a DNF. I think a DNF is... Everybody should DNF. Everybody should DNF. And DNF in a disastrous way. Well. <laughs> like, like, really learn something from that. Like, you start and you go, oh, yeah, quad hamstring's not feeling too good today, just pull out this 10K. Like, cool. Like, you're strong enough also to understand, like, this is not my day and I'm not going to push myself and I'm not going to destroy myself for the rest of the running. Like, that's also a really strong thing to do. Yeah. But even if you try and push and risk everything to get to a finish line, you don't get there. Like, the bravery to even just go that far is magical. Like, that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. It really is. Yeah. Talking about, like, we've spoken a lot about your failures, and some of them aren't just you didn't finish this thing. Some of them, like you were saying earlier, was like you wanted to do a marathon in six, in four hours and mm. you did it in six. So like some of these failures are self-imposed and you said how it made you feel throughout that journey. Mm. And it started off of, of this feeling of almost like inadequacy of like, I'm not enough because I didn't do the thing that I told myself I was going to do. Yeah. Um, how, how did you get over those feelings? Like what brought you back to running because I know a lot of people out there would have those failures see themselves as not enough and then they would just leave it there and be like well I, I'm not good enough for that I'm not enough for that it's a good question and I think there's there's two parts to it and there have been things that I've done in life that I've tried not succeeded in, and I've never even picked them up again and things like that like when I was at school I was playing golf um I seemed to be quite good at it um so ended up in this junior golf association which was basically you know trying to find the next you know team to go into PGA and things like that and I just went up against a whole load of people that were far better than me like yeah I was great on my own I was great against some other people but put me in a in a crowd of people against a load of other really good people and suddenly I looked like shit and I was just like I'm not enjoying this anymore. Like, it wasn't my thing. So, yeah, I quit that. Like, I haven't picked up a golf club in 25, 30 odd years. Like, obviously I've played mini golf. Like, it's probably the closest thing that I've got to it. But have I actually gone around a golf course since? No. No, not at all. So, when it came to running, it was, it was a fact that I was stubborn enough to know that there was more to this than those times. Or it was a case of I'm stubborn enough to keep trying to chase these times. And somewhere along that, that, that line I'm going to learn something very, very different. But I was definitely learning all the way through all of this. But if I look back at it, it's all the people that I've met along the way that keep me coming back, without a doubt. Yeah. It's getting to go to some pretty cool places, to run with some pretty cool people, and to experience all of the highs and the lows. Like, you can replicate life in, in a run, like in a marathon as well, like, you know, or, or any distance. Like... You can start off, it's going really well. Then it goes to the dogs. Then it comes back. Then you finish. You've got highs. You've got lows. You've got through it. So that's life at that point. Like running really is a metaphor for life in a way. Like you, you, can, you can attach whatever you want to it. But I feel that you can really learn so much in such a short period of time that you can apply to anything at that point. And... A lot of it is whatever you're going through is temporary. It's not going to last. It's going to change. And then you're going to have something else to deal with. And that will be temporary. And that will change. And you've just got to keep going through things. And this is where all of the quotes now start coming into my head. And like all of the ones like, this too shall pass. You know, it's like everything's temporary and Winston Churchill's like when you're going through hell keep going why keep going because you're going to get through it you've just got to go through this stuff to come out the other side because it will get better 
But it's like, if you stop in the middle of it, you end up sat in the middle of it. And you can then wallow in that. But how do you get out of it? You've still got to work your way out. Or you've still got to experience that and go through it. And I think for me, it was always that element with running was just like, whilst I was focused on chasing times, and I was still so focused on that, they affected me slightly differently in terms of if I didn't hit them, because it was kind of like, well, I know I've just got to try harder. Like, there was something that I could learn out of that. It was only in the 250s where I, I had placed so many binary metrics on it that, and that association with me being enough and me being strong enough to conquer life being if I can actually complete an ultra that's this hard, then I'm, I, can, I can do anything at that point. And it was that realization of like when I hit the, when I didn't when I hit those DNFs that shit, maybe I'm not strong enough to do an ultra. And if I'm not strong enough to do an ultra, am I strong enough to survive my own mind? And that was where I really started questioning stuff at yeah. that point. And that was a really slippery slope. Do you think then that you can only really appreciate the journey because you've essentially finished it? You've hit the goal you set to yourself. I want to finish a 250 race. I've now finished that. You you can now like look back and in hindsight and be like, yeah, I've learned all these lessons along the way. It's been this incredible journey. But what if you hadn't finished that last 250? Would you still be in the same mind space or do you feel like you'd still have to learn those lessons? I would probably think that I still had something to learn. I think I would have... I would have approached sort of like the recovery out of that very differently. I probably would have hit that finish line very differently as well. Um, having, you know, sat there and, and at why we run at the first one and supported everyone and, and knew what I could get from there. If, at, you know, in Tanzania at that 250k, if I hadn't crossed that finish line, absolutely would have been at that finish line with a beer, cheering people and things like that. And, and just knowing that my journey is still continuing. There's something else. Like we haven't reached the end of that chapter. Like there's still something to write. There's still something to come. So let's see when that comes. Let's see where that is. But for now, I'm in this moment that I need to support. Like I can still enjoy this. I can still get something from this rather than what I did, which was in Sri Lanka, which was just like throw everything on the floor. Like literally baby out with a bath. <laughs> like throw a, t a child's tantrum type thing. Like why me? Why am I not good enough? Why can't I do this? Like, come on. <laughs> like I trained for this. Like I deserve this. Like it's all of those kind of feelings that, and thoughts that just put us in this box of binary success that, you either do or you don't. And if you don't, pfft, what's the point? Why do we bother doing it? And I think that's that that was the thing. It's like I will attribute to a certain extent that mindset of how I went into Tanzania by just knowing that I'm here to get the best possible experience and learn the most I can. If I cross the finish line, great. If I don't, it's not the end of the world. I know that I'm here to have an adventure. And I'd already had such a great holiday until that point as well. Like, we just went with the flow. We, we, we decided that we were going to go on a cycle ride before the, even the 250k. What we hadn't quite appreciated was a cycle ride halfway up Kilimanjaro. So like, we had cycled up like 600 meters the day before the race. Like, <laughs> and it's like, in my head, I was thinking, I'm probably going to pay for that at some point during the race. But it didn't matter because that experience that we had had was, again, creating some memories, creating some experiences, sharing that um, environment and sharing that that journey with, with friends was just such a wonderful thing. I was like, well, it doesn't matter what happens now. Like, even if everything stopped right now, it's like, I've had such a great experience up to now. I've had such a great point. You know, I've got memories. I've got tons of pictures on my phone. Like, I'm, I'm, even, I'm, I'm happy even if it stopped now. So let's just see how far this, you know, this goes. Yeah. Let's just keep, let's keep going and let's see where we end up. So, oh, we end up at a finish line. Because I think taking away that pressure suddenly makes things far easier. And 
you can see it with a lot of people. It's like the ones who look like they're having a good time on a race probably are at that point. Like they're the ones that are just going to go, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's gone wrong. Whatever. Let's keep going. You know, it's, like if you can find the joy in anything, it's always going to be exciting. Yeah. So this like really leads me into something else I wanted to pick up on. So you've you've set this goal for yourself. You've gone along the journey. You've learned all yep. these lessons. How do you know that that's enough? Like, when does the journey end? Because you've done your 250 now. Is that just like, right, I've set this binary goal. Mm. Am I happy with that? Like, you seem pretty content in that. There's people out there, and like, you were one of them when you were doing your half marathons and your yeah. marathons, and you're like, oh, there's more, keep there's keep more, going, there's keep more. Going, keep going. Yeah. When, when is it enough? At what it's, point? An, it's, it's a really good question. I, I love this one. And we do see it quite a lot that there are the people that want to go harder, faster, and, and, and big, dig deeper holes for themselves in a way. It's like, what can we do? You know, how hard can we go? How far can we push ourselves? And I'll always ask people in those circumstances is essentially it's like, what are you running from at that point? You know, what is it that you're trying to prove to yourself at that point? Because I think you need to ask the question. It's like, why, you know, why am I doing this? You know, why? And it shouldn't, and that, that should be a really deep why as to, to, <laughs> to why you're going to do that. Like my deep why or my why for doing the 250s at that point in time was to prove to myself that I was enough, that I was, that I was a strong person. Like, that's not a great why. <laughs> that's really not a great why. Um, I think there are, there's absolutely like a place for people to go harder and do that. And it's like, if you've got a good why, go for it. If you're trying to pin that event or that distance or whatever it is on a binary success that I have to do this to prove something to me, I, I do think that's a dangerous game. Because you should be doing it for the joy of doing it or for the adventure or for what you're going to learn out of it. Not by, I have to chase that finish line. Would I do another 250k five, five day ultra? I've got no desire to do another one. Because it's not about a 250k finish line. It's about the experience along the way. I can get that on a 50k. I can get that on many other events. I get quite a lot of the the joy from the training as well and training in weird and wonderful places that I get to go to. Like that's the joy. The event, as I say, that's that's the victory lap and that's the easy part. But the joy that I seek is not at that finish line. And it doesn't matter if that's a two hundred and fifty K, a five hundred K like running multiple marathons for fifty days or whatever it is. It's like I'm not going to see any joy at that finish line. I'll have a joy from that first marathon that I do. I'll have joy maybe from the second marathon. And then I can go, do you know what? I've got enough joy for today. That's enough. I'm not going to do the next day. That's it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> because there's always something else in life that we can get the joy from. Yeah. I just, I find it so interesting because you was chasing that for so long and then it just seems to be like that's that's done now mm. and that's something that i know i personally struggle with is just being like okay i've i've finished that it's for me i'm i'm seeking that more i am that person that is mm. like i've done that now and like i'm capable of that like i'll sign up to these things that i am definitely not capable of when i start yeah and then i do it and then i'm like so if i'm capable of that like what what more what can I do? And it's, it, it's a good thing to explore. Like, it's absolutely a great thing to explore. And that's what we do. Like, as human beings, we want to explore what we are capable of and things like that. And that's perfectly good to do. Where I found the interesting part was finding out what I could do was not as important as finding out what I would learn along the way. 
and helping me as a person to grow, helping me as a person to learn other things that I'm good at. Like, that's where I then learned, it's like, actually, I can do more for why we run. And this is why I became RD for why we run, was I got more out of providing that environment and supporting those people to have that same experience that I did, to learn that it's okay not to finish, but to actually pick up what you can through that environment and create such a supportive community that actually, cool. And if, if we could have that on every single distance event around the world, my God, we would see so, so, so many people really enjoying running and, and, and so much less negative stuff around goals, PBs, you know, what did you achieve? What did you achieve? Like everyone will be asking, it's like, what did you learn? What did you learn about yourself? Yeah. And taking it back to the why, because this seems to be a very strong point that you're trying to get across is having that why, that solid reason for doing something. Mm. And you said that chasing something internally just isn't a good enough why. What is a good enough why? Why should someone be seeking these challenges? What's a, a good motivation, a healthy motivation to do something this hard while also being strong enough that when things do go wrong, which they're going to, yeah. like 100%, something's going to go wrong, that they can then rely on that and be like, no, this this is it. Yeah, This is 100% what I'm doing, why I'm doing and that, it. it. It becomes super personal to the person at that point. Like my, And what I can speak about is like my why and where I changed that. Where my why was to start with was... I need to do this to prove to myself that I'm strong enough to survive me at that point. Now, when I'm out and, you know, when it's all going, <laughs> when it's all going pear shaped and everything was going wrong and, you know, in the first one and I was, you know, digging myself into a hole to the point where I was actually now starting to basically be dizzy and blacking out, you know, on the event was prior to that, I had actually sat down next to a river, um, and question myself on my on my why. Like I questioned myself whether I was strong enough to do this. Like I had my head was already spinning out spinning out of control. And I had gone to my why. Like, why was I doing this? To prove to myself that I'm strong enough. What situation am I in right now? I don't think I'm strong enough. And I just spiraled. That like and then that's when I really started to push, because it's no no, I'm strong enough. I'm strong enough. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push when really what I should have been doing is understanding myself that I need to find a different way to motivate myself through this. And my why now is around enjoying it and things like that. Why am I doing this? Because I want to learn something about myself. Like I want to experience something. Like, and if I'm at a point in that race where I feel that I've learned something, and I've got something out of it. If I stop at that point, it doesn't matter because I've achieved my why. Or I've gone to my why. And that's where I feel that sometimes that for me personally, I don't need a deep why that's going to drive me to the finish line. I need a deep why that's going to allow me to feel proud of what I've done at whatever point of that race that I get to, or whatever point in that event that I get to, or whatever I do in life, that I'm gonna feel proud of, of however I achieve it. Because it's, again, it comes back to like, you might not reach that finish line. And if you don't reach that finish line, what do you take away from it? Yeah. If someone is sort of in that part of their journey where they're they don't feel like they're enough and they're doing these challenges to prove to themselves that they are, what would your advice be to them to get out of that mindset? Because I can imagine it's quite a tough one to be it's in. A, it's, a very, it's a very tough one and it's, it's almost, and like, I mean it took three events for me to, to really break that one down. The advice I would give would be look around. Just look around yourself at that point. But it's also look backwards that point look at how far you've come look at what you've achieved to get where you are 
I think quite a lot with a lot of these events, the biggest challenge that we ever have or the biggest accomplishment we get is actually just reaching the start line. If you've made it to the start line of event, you've actually done the hardest part of the work. And that is complete building your body up to that, managing your nutrition, managing your injuries, managing your sleep, managing your social life around all of these things. Like doing all of that, like that's manic what you have to juggle. And the bigger the event, the bigger the challenge, the more you have to juggle that. And the more challenging that becomes, because you're also then saying to, to friends, to family, sorry, I can't, I've got a long run in the morning. Like, can't come out. Like, you're, you're really balancing and you're like, you're, you're sacrificing quite a lot. And if you go, it's like, I've managed to navigate all of that in my life to get myself here, to be able to do that. If I can do that much, that last bit of that challenge doesn't matter because I know that I can repeat that again and I get another shot. I can go back out and I can do this again because the hardest part I've done and I just need to repeat that again. Yeah, that is, that is a really interesting point. Um, something I feel like a lot of people need to hear out there because I know I chased that for a while of mm. feeling like I need to do more because I'm not enough. Um, and even when you do achieve something, there's always something that you're like, oh, I could have done better. Yep. Yeah. No matter how well it goes, you could set that that goal of the four hour marathon, hit it by like three fifty nine and be like, Well, I've done it though, so like I could have done more. Yeah. And you look back and be like, See, I spent that time out with with my friends or my family when I could have been training and I could have done it quicker. So next time I'm gonna do it quicker and it just mm. it's a never ending. You, you can refocus that a little bit and it's just like that time that I spent with my friends or my family. What, what occurred on that evening? Like, there's probably a wonderful moment and you've gone, I would have missed out on that if I didn't do that. Yeah. There's, there's so many things that occur in all of that journey up until that point that we can pull energy from, we can pull joy from, we can realize that that's all part of this fine tapestry of our own individual lives that take us to these moments. And... If we don't achieve something at that point, it means that story's not ended. That chapter's not finished. Let's go again. Let's see, let's see where let's see where, let's see where this rabbit hole goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've mentioned as well your race director for Why We Run. Mm -hmm. What can we expect from Why We Run, like this year and in the future? Good question. Um, why Why We Run? we're going to remain very specific in what we do and that is to continue to support and create this beautiful community of people that understand the value of helping each other to get to a finish line you know we we stick by a couple of values that we have and you know one of the the main ones being we we rise by lifting others like you're going to get far more out of supporting someone else to get to a finish line or to achieve something or to do something than you are just chasing it yourself at that point. And we're, we've got all of our entrants lined up for, for this year. Um, so we will be returning to uh, Pembrokeshire um, and uh, the beautiful location that we did it last year. Um, repeat process with more people um the aim is to change more lives um both for the athletes both for the crew members that come along to be part of it <coughs> but also for um big moose as well so we've got a, a lofty target that we want to raise money for as well um and everybody's on board and what i absolutely love about it is from the get-go everybody is so energized like the energy in the community like we fire up a whatsapp group with with everybody in and just communicating with the people that were in the ballot and letting them know they're in and, and then you know those questions is like you can feel that energy you can absolutely feel that energy and i know that that's just going to continue to build and what what will occur at why we run this year is going to be electric like it's going to be phenomenal um, it always is, but 
that's super, super exciting is to see how it's going to come out, what it's going to do and things like that. And our plan is to continue that. And like the more people that we can help, the more people that we can get into the community, um, the more people that we can help with life, that's a win for us. You know, again, take away the podium, take away the times, take away placing and things like that and just go, cool, we're going on a 250K adventure. Like, it's like Alice in Wonderland at that point. Like, down the yellow brick road, here we go. Like, it's, it's suddenly, like, an enjoyable experience. Yeah. That it doesn't matter how fast you go. It doesn't matter how slow you go. It just matters that you go together. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think that's a good point to start <coughs> wrapping up the podcast. Um, one thing I do ask of guests at the end of each of my podcasts, this is something I started this year, is... If you could set a challenge for the listeners to complete this week, what would it be? Oh, I would say to mirror kind of like that experience of everything that I've done and things like that is go out for a run. Don't measure its distance. Don't measure its time. Leave your watch at home if you need to. I know we always like like it on Strava, so you know maybe just cover it with like a, a buff or something like that. But just go out there and run to feel and stop when you're ready to stop. Don't stop because you've reached a time. Don't stop because you've reached a distance. Run until you're ready to stop. And if that means you've just gone past the cafe and that's got a great coffee and you've gone in and you've had a you know, a pastry and a coffee, and you look at your watch and go, oh, shit, I did 15K, great. Or you look at your watch and go, oh, I did 15 meters. Like, who cares? It doesn't matter. But just enjoy that. Yeah. No, that's an incredible challenge. Thank you. Um, where can people find you online if they want to follow your journey? Follow me on Instagram, um, at running to feel. Amazing. Well, thanks for your time really appreciate thank it you. and good luck with your talk tomorrow thank you um, by the time this comes out it'd have been and gone but yep. yeah good luck thanks very much thanks for listening to this episode of the adventure athletes podcast if you like this episode make sure you follow us on instagram spotify and youtube and share our content around it helps more than you can ever imagine now if there's a person in particular that you want to hear from or a topic that you want us to cover, just drop us a message, let us know in our DMs and we'll make sure we try and reach out to the relevant people to cover that topic for you. We're always trying to make content that you guys want to listen to. We have just dropped our website, it's adventureathletes.co.uk and you can go on there to find out the range of different services we offer. So we have sports massage, different training programs, and personal training both online and in person that you can sign up to on the website so make sure you go and check us out at adventureathletes.co.uk